You know who sucks? Both sides. Like people who want bodily autonomy and the people who want to force 10-year-olds to give birth. People in Antifa and then people who are whatever anti-Antifa is. FA, I guess, whatever that stands for. And yes, people who are worried about the irreversible damage humans are doing to the planet and people who value money more than human lives. Okay, no, this isn't a video equivocating both sides, don't worry. Um, but I am going to talk about both sides of the climate change debate uh, having a bit of viral misinformation this week. So I figured we would just tackle both of them in one video. So first up, an easy one. Climate change deniers are passing around a uh, the text from a Washington Post article from 1922 that relays reports from fishermen, hunters, and explorers in the Arctic who say that they've seen a dramatic drop in the amount of ice along with fewer seals and fish. They claim that the article closes with, within a few years, it is predicted that due to the ice melt, the sea will rise and make most coast cities uninhabitable. That is a complete fabrication that was not in the original article. But that first part about explorers seeing less ice and food in the Arctic is correct. The Washington Post did report that. Because, of course, that happened in our history because – that's how weather works. There have always been swings in temperature, sometimes dramatic swings around the world. Climate change is about long-term, more permanent changes that can only be seen by carefully collecting a lot of data from various sources over many years, which scientists have continued to do for several centuries now so that they can tell you without a shadow of a doubt that the Earth is warming and it's due to human activity. This would be like someone trying to downplay U.S mass shootings by digging up an article from The Star in 1888 describing a man who murdered five women in London. Aha, this happened before assault weapons were common. Therefore, assault weapons are not the cause of mass murders. Checkmate, libs. No, don't don't be an idiot. Step back, look at all of the data we have, and notice the trends that we can see happening across several centuries. Okay, so that's one side. Now it's time for the other side. I saw a piece go viral this week claiming that researchers found we have all but wiped out plankton in the Atlantic Ocean. This claim originated in the mainstream media over at the Sunday Post, which is a weekly Scottish tabloid that reported that the Global Oceanic Environmental Survey Foundation, an Edinburgh-based research team, spent two years collecting water samples from the Atlantic, finding that a shocking 90% of the ocean's plankton is now, poof, gone. That would, that would be hugely upsetting if it were true which it's not. Uh, because plankton truly is like the backbone of our planet in a way. Literally every other breath you take is thanks to plankton. Phytoplankton is the collection of microscopic bits of algae and bacteria and other random thingies that not only produce 50% of the Earth's oxygen, but also provide the food source for slightly bigger kinds of zooplankton like krill, which then provide the food source for way bigger things like whales, which then provide the food source for human dickheads. And also sharks, I guess, whatever, circle of life, etc. So yeah, if we suddenly lost 90% of the stuff that provides us with 50% of our oxygen, that would be a very big deal. Also, we probably would have noticed. Uh, but okay, let's take a quick look at the research that this Sunday Post article is based on. So let's see, they cite the Global Oceanic Environmental Survey Foundation, and they link just to their website. And from there, we can find a link to the report in question titled Climate Change, Have We Got It All Wrong?, which was published in the journal Nothing. Nowhere. It's not been published anywhere, meaning it's not been peer-reviewed, and this entire thing could at best be called a preprint, though... I think the word preprint suggests that it might be printed somewhere in the future, which I can't imagine is true because this 
paper also includes zero information about how or where they conducted their sampling and what exactly led them to state that losses closer to 90% have occurred. And these are due to chemical pollution from, for example, wastewater and not climate change. They do on their website feature a citizen science project, which appears to be their entire thing, in which they suggest that if you own a yacht... (laughs) They'll uh, they'll give you a, a special filter, and then you can buy a microscope. They include some Amazon links. And then you can go scoop up some water in the ocean somewhere, look at it in a microscope, and then tell them how many planktons you see. Also, they include some really helpful advice, like just try not to take the samples while you're wearing your fleece because it sheds many plastic particles. Probably not a good idea wearing a fleece in any case because you will be breathing in plastic from your clothes. So no fleece, got it. So yeah, I guess this crucial, extremely upsetting, catastrophic research is being carried out by random yacht owners with no oversight apart from that of the guy who runs the Global Oceanic Environmental Survey Foundation, Dr. Howard Dryden, who, as far as I can tell, has published pretty much no peer-reviewed papers in reputable journals apart from this review of the water filtration system in the penguin enclosure at Edinburgh Zoo, published in the International Zoo Yearbook of 1994. Reputable journal, I think. Uh, So now a word about Howard Dryden. In addition to being the face of the Global Oceanic Environmental Survey Foundation, his about page reports that he is also responsible for several products and companies related to filtering plastics and chemicals out of the water, like Dryden Aqua Filtration Systems. I'm not going to say that this is the main reason why Global Oceanic Environmental Survey Foundation titled their paper, Climate Change, Have We Got It All Wrong?, and repeatedly insists that we shouldn't really care that much about carbon and climate change because it's really wastewater that's the problem. In fact, we'll all probably benefit from more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. And really, we just need to get the plastics and the chemicals out of our wastewater somehow. I I could never say for certain that Dryden's primary goal is to, you know, sell his filtration systems. But I will say that, yeah, that's, uh, that's actually super shady. So if we can't trust this rando who claims 90% of all plankton in the Atlantic is gone, who can we trust? Well, how about the Continuous Plankton Recorder Survey, a robust, prestigious, and important project that has been running for nearly a century, and which gives us a comprehensive understanding of how the plankton population has changed since 1931, and especially over about the past 70 years, because during that time, they've actually used the exact same method of data collection to provide continuity of data for all of those years. Some of their findings show, for instance, that due to climate change, most likely, warmer water plankton species are migrating northward, which may have led to one particular zooplankton species in the North Sea declining by maybe 70%. They've also been monitoring ocean acidification and have found that while it isn't a problem in the open ocean right now, they're seeing signs that it could become a leading driver of climate change pretty soon. Similarly, they consider the phytoplankton population of the North Atlantic to be fairly healthy uh, at the moment, but that particular vulnerable areas of the ocean might see some trouble, and they're finding more microplastics and more frequent, frequent harmful algae blooms in specific areas. And a big takeaway seems to be that the researchers, careful researchers like these, don't tend to make sweeping generalizations about what is happening to plankton in the Atlantic Ocean, because plankton encompasses a lot of different species, and the Atlantic Ocean comprises a huge swath of our planet. So you can't really make a generalization about what is happening with plankton in the Atlantic Ocean. You have to look at specific areas where change is occurring. Now, you might think that Dryden and the Sunday Post piece are not a big deal because if they're wrong, at least they might spur people to go in the right direction toward caring more about what is happening to our oceans. 
But falsely saying that 90% of plankton is just gone isn't necessarily going to make people care more so much as it is going to make people throw their hands in the air and give up. Like, there's no coming back from that, right? Like, goodbye planet Earth, goodbye humanity. Additionally, this is just absolutely perfect fodder for climate change deniers. On the one hand, you have a scientist pushing the narrative that it's not really about carbon and human caused global warming. We just need to worry about plastic and nebulous chemicals draining into the ocean. On the other hand, you have a really easily debunked lie that deniers can point to and say, see, these people uh, want to make you care about stuff uh, by just making things up. So you can't really believe anything they say. So I hope this video helps in a couple of ways. One, I hope that if you saw that article and panicked that we're all doomed, you know that it's not true. You can kind of relax. And uh, the other thing is, I hope that if you see this particular bit of doomerism popping up on your social media feed, uh, that you can now rebut it, or at least don't spread it around, because these sort of lies don't really help anybody, except for wa water filtration corporations, I guess, might help them. 